Hello everyone, I'm Mark Snodgrass and today I wanted to talk about best practices for designing a card in Domo. You know, there are a lot of options uh, when you are creating a card, a lot of things to think about uh, to make sure that the card is going to be usable, actionable, uh, just easy to digest and easy to understand. So just wanted to walk through kind of some uh, top tips that you may want to consider when you're going to design a card. So the first thing when you are creating a card is to make sure that you're going to choose the right data set. That is super important. You want to choose one that you can uh, be sure that it's using uh, current data. So you can, when you select a data set, you can look at the history, see how recent it ran, you can look at the number of rows that are in it. You can look at the number of uh, the, which columns are in it and determine, okay, yeah, that this has the fields that I need. This has got current data. It's got the row count that I'm anticipating um, and I can trust. Better yet, if it's uh, certified, if you're using certifications in your data set, then you'll want to, you can better rely on that as something to build a data set off of. Uh, once you've selected that data set, then the next step would be determining what the right card type to use. Domo gives you a lot of different choices. Here you've got the popular card types um, that are most commonly used here, but then you have got um, cards by vertical bars, you've got horizontal, you've got lines, gauges, lots of different options. You want to make sure um, that you're choosing one that maybe not just the prettiest one or the um, that might stand out the most, but one that's easiest to understand. And Domo has a nice PDF uh, that kind of breaks down a decision that you might want to think about. So, you know, what kind of um, information do I have? What do I want to show? Uh, and kind of follow these little decision matrix to help you get to a uh, card type that makes sense for your viewers. You can find this. Um, image diagram uh, on this best practice for choosing chart, type, chart types uh, knowledge base article. Uh, and I'll have a link to this in my uh, write up for this as well. So today I'm going to just do a regular uh, bar type. Um, I wanna then make sure that I want to uh, just drag in a couple basic pieces of information. So maybe I'm just gonna do some claim counts uh, for right now. So I'm just going to drag that in there. Got that demo automatically. Pick the date of event, which is fine for me. Um, but then kind of the next step is kind of labeling and formatting this information. So um, a better example even is to, you know, for this one, I'm going to label and say this is claim counts. So we want to say claims. And I want to format this as number in this instance. And we're going to keep that as decimal zero and a thousand separator though. But if I wanted to bring in maybe some cost information, total reported, let's label this as total incurred. Then I don't want to show it as cents um, and I would like a, a dollar sign to be showing there. So I'm going to choose currency and then I'm going to get rid of the decimal places. And you'll notice when I get rid of the decimal places, it will change what's in the axis over here. So that's kind of important um, for displaying purposes. You're going to make sure that that's um, kind of easy to read. I like not showing the decimal places a little too granular for my, my purposes. Um, but now when I hover over, then I see some nice totals uh, showing there. I'm also going to get rid of the summary number for right now. Talk about that maybe a little bit later, but that always gets me. And it's uh, showing up a random summary number that I'm not one of used to. So we're going to get those cleaned up. We've got that um, showing. We can label this as well. Um, maybe we want to call this event date. Uh, for this field, and that may come into play uh, later for us. 
Uh, little side note, you'll see with our data that this, uh, we're using the data event, it's going um, only back to 1990, either, but my data actually does go back further than that if I were to change this to be graphed by none. Um, it's gonna think for a little bit, but you see my data actually goes back to 1972. It's actually a limitation with graphing by year and using a date field. Domo only knows to go back to um, 1990 due to their calendaring um, that they've got behind the scenes. So keep that in mind if your data goes back really far here, but you can also get around that if you're gonna graph by year, uh, bring in the a year field. Um, but we'll maybe talk about that a little bit later. So next would be to um, make use of the various chart properties. So Domo gives you a lot of different chart properties to uh, make use of. I encourage you to click through there and you can put your mouse in here and it will um, tell you what that's for. One of the things I'm gonna do is uh, show the uh, value scale, this title, why, so people know what this is um, for. So you'll see when I add that, then it's gonna add that right here along the left so people know what that amount, what that y-axis is all about. And we can do the same with the x-axis. We can say um, year here as well. So now that's showing up. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do. Another one, this right now is a little too busy. Um, so I may um, show just a little bit more recent. i switching to this and going last. 10 years perhaps. And now I can choose data label settings and say show total label. And now these numbers show there. It's a little bit, probably not how I would like because these numbers are pretty, pretty big, uh, but you have some different options uh, on styling that. Um, I'm gonna take that away for right, right now. I don't like my numbers vertical, but know that that option is, is there. Another thing you can do is uh, customize your, your hover text. So you see when I hover over something, it's gonna grab the, the x-axis value and the y-axis value and show that. Um, you could style that up if you want by combining some um, things, but you could type in event year and then colon and then put the uh, category name, I believe. Let's see if we got that one right. Yes. And then we can put a new line and then say total incurred and then put value. So then there's that. So then now it's a little clearer what those uh, things are. And you saw when I hovered over to this plus sign with the other built-in macros, you've got things like tooltip one, two, and three that are available in here. Those are really handy if you wanted to bring in some um, additional uh, information. So maybe you wanted the uh, total claim count for us in here. So you could do that. You could then put in our text and then you and tooltip field one. So now we get that and we get those formatting. You see right now it's not <clears throat> formatted uh, very well. That's because we didn't choose anything here. So if we choose format and choose number, got our thousand separator. Now that will get inherited into those hover check settings. So now we see that clean count 58,204 for that. So those can be uh, pretty helpful. You saw I touched on the uh, appropriate date range. 
It uh, doesn't make sense sometimes to go back to all time. That's where it kind of defaults. Um, so think about what you want to do. Are you kind of looking at things from, from a semi-historical perspective? You want to do the last 10 years? You want to do more of the month um, or quarter? Um, I would caution you from putting a date in here, um, especially like a less than or equal to, because then as new data comes in, nothing will be um, showing. So I like to use these last 10 years. So then it's kind of always rolling forward um, or any, you know, any last something and always rolling forward. Uh, and the data is always uh, going to continually be updated. You're not, you're not hindering the data uh, by your filter in there. So think about um, that, what makes sense for your viewer, what they want to, to to be able to see. Uh, next would be la labeling your card. So by, uh, by default, it's gonna name it the same as the data set, which isn't always very helpful. So what did we do here? We sh showed um, incurred uh, by year for, for us. And then you can add a description um, saying, place claim totals by year and defaults last 10 years. And a summary number would be um, maybe helpful now. So over those last 10 years, what, um, what was our total incurred in here? So we're gonna choose this to sum. We're gonna change this to be total and we're going to change this to currency. We're going to leave it as two decimal places. And so now we see that number. It is helpful to have your summary number kind of be in line with what you're representing on your on your card and, and not something completely different can confuse the readers um, what they're what they're looking at here. So keep that in in context. So now we've got a pretty nice looking card that we've got labels along the bottom and along the side. We've formatted our uh, numbers. We've got uh, some hover with some additional information on here. And then we can save and close that card and feel pretty good about it. And we'll show up here. We'll drag that up to the top so we can see it. And now we see that in full view. And again, with those day ranges, we've set it at last 10 years, but you can, the viewer can change it and just look at the last five if they want to. They're not gonna affect the card at all. Um, and, but you've kind of set what your initial view wants, wants it to be. So hopefully you found all this helpful. Um, and feel free to uh, reach out to me if you've got additional questions. I'll be continuing to post more videos uh, that will hopefully provide you some good tips and tricks on providing meaningful cards to your audience.